Investors who here as well taking some money off the table. Stock moves back to the low point of the day. Let's get in Jigar Mistri, co-founder at Boyan Capital, who joins us on the show. Hi, Jigar. Uh, good afternoon. Good to see you in. Jigar, I have to ask you about metals. What's going on today? Have you heard something? Uh, you know, 10 years ago or so, I would have called you in your earlier avatar on the sell side and said, Jigar, what's going on? And it's not even November when normally, you know, the conversations are very, very exciting because you're getting into that new year. People buy in November, sell in February, and you're packed up for the rest of the year. Have you heard anything overnight? Uh, hi, Nigel. Yes. And I would have told you 10 years ago that, you know, <laughs> China, all the whispers have started again. Uh, they're trying very hard to sort of get their ducks in the row. Uh, cooking coal prices a week ago started <laughs> firming up. I know it looks like it's going to go up again. Uh, steel prices are not on the move uh, just yet, uh, but then that can happen at any point in time. Uh, steels are cyclical, so might as well, you know, sort of buy the rumor and then sell the uh, sell the news. So <laughs> pretty much uh, how that conversation would have went, Nigel. Mm, okay. Uh, <clears throat> all, all right. So, so Ajigar, hi, afternoon. So what's happening? <laughs> you didn't answer the question. <laughs> yeah. You told me what you told me 10 years ago. What about now? I think he's saying that he'd say the same thing. Jigar, is that it? He'd say the same thing. Yeah, 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 Prashant and Nigel. Absolutely. So see, I think with a lot of these steel names, uh, like yeah. I was on your uh, sort of uh, studio a few weeks ago, and then we discussed that in the era of, you know, uh, these sort of super cycles being taken away, uh, all countries have created walls of their own. So essentially, everybody is now sort of trying to pinpoint what news you can trade. Uh, in that scenario, you know, given the flow of money that's coming in the sector, that's not run up a lot, uh, not really expensive vis-a-vis -vis its own sort of historical valuation. So it might make sort of a sense to just play this out, looking especially at how the raw materials have moved. So I would say uh, fundamentally nothing really changes. Uh, but yeah, sort of if China gets its act together, then there is some amount of money to be made uh, with a cyclical name like this. Thank for that. Uh, Jigar is with us. Uh, <clears throat> Jigar, uh, I mean, if you, if you, I don't know if you own any of these hospital names, but if you owned any of them, and, and uh, how would you react to something like this? Uh, would you, would you yeah, keep the faith that so ultimately this will be resolved or this is serious enough for you to exit? No, we don't own any of these names, Prashant. But see, it's uh, anything that gets into a regulatory huddle sort of is very difficult, right? Because uh, think of it, the gov as far as the government is concerned so far, uh, there has been a fair amount of understanding that they're trying to back off everything that can be market proscribed, right? So you look at increasingly, they are making a lot of rules uh, very, very well known, and then they're just stepping back saying, you know, we'll let the market take care of itself. But if it gets sort of into the Supreme Court trajectory and then that uh, directs the government on how things need to be addressed, then until sort of the situation is resolved, uh, you know, you don't really know how, uh, you know, the valuations react. So like we say, right, that uh, all stories are basically the numbers of today and some story uh, for tomorrow. Now, if the story for tomorrow does get impugned, uh, then you don't really just depend on what the story, for, the numbers for today are. So I think, no, but I think the bigger question, Prashant, is that how many of these sort of similar businesses are really there wherein the greater public good, something or the other could emerge because, you know, of some litigation that's going elsewhere. So I think that needs to be taken into cognizance as well. Uh, sort of, I think it's, it would be very difficult for anybody to keep owning these businesses, keeping the faith on. That's hospitals. Uh, uh, quite a bit of regulatory overhang there given the statements that have come in from the Apex Court. By the way, this is a charge of the Light Brigade, really 350 points on the Nifty. There's just no stopping. There's a full half an hour to go before the week and the day closes out. Uh, and no, uh, actually, yeah, tomorrow. Week tomorrow. Doesn't correct, correct. Out. Week yeah. doesn't close out tomorrow. I stand corrected. <laughs> but till, you know, Monday to Friday at least close out. And that is a very solid looking screen. Uh, yeah. Jigar, hi, good afternoon. Just wanted to get your sense on two-wheelers because those numbers are looking very, very strong even now. Bajaj Auto's numbers, two-wheeler numbers, up 25%. Uh, we just had TVS numbers. They've done about 33 34% on two-wheeler sales. This is, uh, I mean, uh, February over February last year. Uh, and it kind of defies everything else that we keep hearing on, you know, rural demand, etc. Because a lot of these bikes are being sold in rural areas and doing exceedingly well. Now, the question is on stocks, because stocks have also moved quite a bit. Would you still be a buyer? And uh, let's throw in a word on CVs as well, because that's the laggard. 
uh, side of the cycle and that that doesn't seem to be picking up. So would you prefer CVs as a dark horse play or would you stick with the winners and two-wheelers? As a reason, no, I think uh, sort of you, a particular month number is sort of a base effect as well that one needs to take into consideration. But if you take the broader trajectory, then I don't really think we are into a zone where we are showing significant increase in volumes. What's happening is that the commodity prices have been benign so far, which means their contributions uh, per vehicle have gone to almost historical highs. And the market seems to be forecasting both things, right? One, they seem to be forecasting that all incremental volumes. So if you take analyst estimates, most of them are projecting 80% of the next five-year sales in two-wheelers will be EVs. So the market seems to be believing that all that EV will be equally as profitable as ICE, which cannot historically be true. Now, if you take a day like today, uh, your Nifty, sort of, sorry, NSE metals index is up 3.5%, but at the same time, because of these numbers, you know, the auto names are up as well. So I think given the disruption, given what's really happening, two-wheelers uh, doesn't really fit the bill very well uh, as far as we are concerned. CVs uh, might make the cut, but again, given where you see the sort of uh, staples demand coming through, there have been all 2-3% growth numbers. So I think even CVs, I think the best way to play this is through auto ancillaries, where you don't really see a lot of disruption play through. A lot of ancillaries mm -hmm. are present across the spectrum, right? So CVs, sort of uh, two-wheelers, and then you can... Uh, pick up a bouquet of uh, services that some of these offer and then play it through that. I think our historical play has been through uh, an auto ancillary rather than the OEMs per se. Okay, all right. Uh, Jigar, final question before we let you go. Simple question. What are the top buy calls? Name a couple of stocks. <laughs> right, so, so I think uh, banks per se, Nigel, and not looking too bad. I was actually, you know, um, I, you know, Jigar, I was going to ask you about that call on Max uh, because y'all had got it very, very right. I recall when you were explaining to us on a couple of shows, valuation-wise, it's in favor. The stock has done very, very well from there. And even after this rally, still valuation-wise is cheaper. I think a brokerage put out a note. If I'm not mistaken, I think the stock was at 600 when you were uh, quite positive on, on this name. So fill us in with that, a view on that and if there are any other picks that you want to talk about. Right. So I think, yeah, Max Financial is also sort of something that I think I, the first show I ever did with Prashant maybe seven odd years ago, five years ago, was on the stock of Max Financial. And then we have continued to own that name pretty much since then. Uh, I think the first part of the play, Nigel, was the run-up because of a valuation differential. And then generally life insurance penetration has not really been very bad. And therefore, that sort of continues to be a reasonably decent play. In between number of budgets, sort of, you have seen some things play out, other things don't. And then I think they continue to do reasonably okay. So that's a name that we continue to like. But I think increasingly, uh, you're seeing a lot of private sector banks, especially uh, the CAPEX-focused ones, I think, uh, are now in the focus. So 2012 to 2021... We saw all incremental lending happen through PLs or sort of personal loans. 2021 onwards, the CAPEX cycle has picked up, uh, but all of that is not yet funded through banks. And only now, uh, you know, that sort of funding is uh, getting the ga gathering the momentum. So I think uh, CAPEX-focused banks, corporate-focused banks uh, are the ones that look the best. Uh, so those are the ones that I think we are getting a lot more overweight on. All right, uh, Jigar, <clears throat> great chair as always. Appreciate you joining in and uh, running us through uh, that uh, perspective. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, but I guess you'll be working tomorrow. <laughs> I think we've been uh, uh, so will you stumbling on that. <laughs> I, I think uh, yeah, we're just kind of still up. getting around to it. You know, acceptance <laughs> will come eventually. It will. Uh, thank you, Jigar, so much for and in case you're not, today. In case you're not working, Jigar, we are just telling our team to connect you. So tomorrow we'll see you on the show <laughs> on as the show. well. <laughs> Eleven a.m. is when we'll like your views. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, Thanks. Okay. All right, Jigar. Thank you very much for joining in. Well, we do have to take a quick break, but before we.